Now we can combine all these laws into the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law can be written as PV is equal to nRT. This satisfies all three of those equations. In the ideal gas law, n is the number of moles of the gas and r is the universal gas constant. r is equal to 8.314 joules per mole per kelvin. Now it's a good idea to practice using this ideal gas law. If you go to homework set 4, Phys 1121 students should try questions 3 and 5 and Phys 1131 students should try questions 4 and 6. Now PV equals nRT is one way to write the ideal gas law. This is a useful way to write it when we have a, around about a mole of a substance. If we have a lot less of a substance than that, then there's a more useful way to write this equation. The number of moles of a substance is just given by the number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number. So R over Avogadro's number is just a constant in this case. Those are both constants, so R divided by Na is actually given a special name. It's called Boltzmann's constant, and it's equal to 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So we can write this ideal gas law, replacing the R on Na with Kb, as PV is equal to NKBT. The capital N means the number of molecules, the little n means the number of moles. So this form is more useful when we only have a small number of molecules. Either form should give you the correct answer. If we're considering a sealed container, then the number of moles is not changing. So we can write PV over T is equal to either NKB or equal to NR, and we can say that both these things are constant. So if that's the case, then if we have any initial pressure, volume, and temperature, we can work out the final pressure, volume, and temperature at any time. Pressure, temperature, and volume are often called macroscopic properties of the gas. This comes about because they're easy to measure. Here's an example question. A bottle of cold water at 5 degrees C is taken from the fridge. The lid is removed and replaced, and then it's left in a car on a hot day. The temperature of the bottle reaches 75 degrees C. Assume that the expansion of the bottle in the water is negligible. What is the pressure of the gas in the bottle now? Okay, so we're just going to use the ideal gas law. PV is equal to nRT. And we were told that the initial temperature was 5.00 degrees C. And we took it out of the fridge and we took the lid off and put the lid back on. What that tells us is that the initial pressure is one atmosphere. So when we took the lid off, the pressure equilibrated with the atmospheric pressure. The final temperature after it's been left in the car is 75.0 degrees C. And we need to find the final pressure. So we have PV over T is equal to NR which is constant. So P initial, V initial, T initial is equal to P final, V final, and T final. And we're told to assume that any expansion of the liquid or the bottle is negligible. So that tells us that the V initial and the V final are the same, so we can cancel them out. So the final pressure is equal to the initial pressure over the initial temperature times the final temperature. Now it's important when we're using this equation to, instead of using degrees C, we need to convert into kelvins. So this is one atmosphere times the final temperature, which is 75.0 plus 273.15 over the initial temperature, which is 5.00 degrees C plus 273.15. You'll need to type all that into your calculator, and we end up with 1.25 atmospheres. So it's fine to answer in atmospheres, as long as we make it very clear that we have answered in atmospheres. It would also be possible to answer in pascals. 
If you want to convert your answer to Pascals, you need to times it by 1.01 times 10 to the 5. So this gives us 1.26 times 10 to the 5 Pascals. Question. A balloon with a volume of 3.3 litres on the surface is taken 15 metres below the surface of the freshwater lake. What is the volume of the balloon at this depth? You may assume that the gas filling the balloon is ideal. Also assume that the lake is at thermal equilibrium and the balloon is at thermal equilibrium with the lake. So we know that we've got some So we know that we've got some balloon here. It's got a volume of 3.3 litres and it's taken below the surface of the lake to a depth of 15 metres. And we're asked what's the volume down here. Let's call that volume 2 and call this volume 1. We know from the ideal gas law that since it says that they remain at thermal equilibrium with the lake, so we'll assume that the lake's got the same temperature on the surface as the bottom, which as we learnt below, before would mean that it was 4 degrees C. So let's just make that assumption. We know that P1V1 is equal to P2V2. And so V2 is going to be P1V1 on P2. So what we need to do is work out the pressure down here. So the pressure down there is going to be the atmospheric pressure which is pushing down on the surface of the lake. So that's just caused by the Earth's atmosphere. And so that's 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals. That's one atmosphere of pressure. Plus we're also going to have the force over the area. Now the force acting on the balloon is the weight of the water above it. So this will be mg and m is going to be equal to rho times the volume which will be rho times the surface area, the cross-sectional area, times the depth, let's call that d. And so we have that this is equal to 1.01 times 10 to the 5, plus the rho, which is 1,000 because it's fresh water, times, well, the a up there will cancel with the a down here, so times d, which is the 15, times the g, which is the 9.8, and so working out this pressure, we have 2.48 times 10 to the 5 pascals. And so V2 is equal to 1.01 times 10 to the 5 over 2.48 times 10 to the 5 times 3.3 litres. And solving that, we get 1.3 litres.